Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I am thrilled to have this Q&A as part of the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival presented by Associated Bank. I am Anna Sampers. I'm the Programming Administration Director for Milwaukee Film, and I am joined here with Hannah Cheeseman, who is the director and screenwriter of the short film Sucker that screens as part of our Shorts Surprise Surprise program. So check that out if you haven't yet, or hopefully you've already watched it, because I imagine we will spoil the surprise in this Q&A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, good point. If you haven't seen it, maybe pause this Q&A, go watch it, and then come back. There um, we go. Welcome, Hannah, so happy to have you. Thanks, yeah, no, delighted to be here, delighted to be a part of the festival. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so to kick off this Q&A, uh, can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to make this film? Yeah, um, it, it's interesting because it's uh, sort of half uh, fiction, half nonfiction. Um, I last uh, January, I was catfished online and mm -hmm. I really didn't see it coming. Like I, I, I guess like most people who get catfished, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Also because it's not like the person asked me for money and and we like seem to have an actual, and I just feel so pathetic saying this, an actual real connection. Um, you know, and I don't consider myself like a desperate kind of a person. So it, it was very unusual. Mm -hmm. And when I realized it happened and you know, like with doing like reverse Google searches and then just like basically sleuthing around and figuring this out, um, you know, I reached out and asked why. Yeah. And they lied to me again uh, to say why. I mean, it was just like an, an another sort of like protective lie. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this is so odd. And I had so many feelings. Like I had, I was confused. I was ashamed. I was upset. I was sad. I was like, you know, it was just like such a mixture of emotions that I quickly while in the midst of feeling them jotted down each feeling I was having mm -hmm. because I was like this is this is interesting territory this is interesting emotional territory to be in and when I was telling um, my sister and her boyfriend and my mom about this short film idea I had and in particular I had like the actresses I wanted to work with in mind my sister's boyfriend said you know it's so funny I was um I was like the object of a of a catfish somebody used my likeness oh. and it actually turned out to be uh, a woman and her best friend who were the two people, the person doing the catfishing and the person catfish, but he was yeah. used in the likeness. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, here's my story. Yeah, uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. so that's where it came from. Wow, wow, what a roller coaster. <laughs> oh my God, no kidding. It was, <laughs> it really was. Yeah, yeah. well, you mentioned the, the two actresses um, and in watching the film, that is something like the chemistry between the two of them was so so great and lovely and so organic um can you talk a little bit about how you cast them what was it like to work with them for sure yeah um those two people i handpicked you know i was i was already friends with dara the woman who does is the catfisher um and you know had gotten to know her just a little bit at parties and stuff but had seen her work like and at thirteen thousand feet and MS Slavic 7, like a lot of interesting work she's done. Um, and I uh, hadn't worked with either her or Michaela and M knew Michaela a little bit less, the redhead, and basically just reached out to them and asked them individually. And and they had wanted to work together as well, being admirers of each other's work. So it, it felt like a wonderful confluence of like people who wanted to work together but hadn't had an opportunity to yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that was an easy pitch, you know? And yeah. um, it was a real like it also came together very quickly i had the idea and from idea and pitching to uh, uh my my producer to first day on on film on uh, pr principal photography was three weeks so it was incredibly yeah. fast yeah and and i think it just spoke to a bit of magic that was behind this because i really do feel like there was magic in this there was magic in the casting and as you say their chemistry it's like they um they're so playful and mm -hmm. um, they both did that within the actual script itself. And then there are some moments that have more breath and are a little more just like, okay, this one's for fun, mm -hmm. you know, and there's magic in that too. So um, that's that's where where I've got that that cast from. And then I wrote to to knowing a little bit about them as well. You know, I I also am a performer, so I respect good performers and wanted their input on, you know, does this feel 
do you not like anything about the script that you're saying mm -hmm. or you know take issue with so i really was open to rewriting based on that as well which mm -hmm. probably means it, it felt organic to them too yeah absolutely yeah and yeah. you honestly you perfectly led into my next question as well um is was there any improv while shooting like you mentioned so much of it did feel organic and there were like there were such great moments throughout that I was like, oh, this is either really good improv or this is an amazingly well-written script and everyone just like stuck to it perfectly. And I couldn't yeah, totally switch. Totally, totally. I mean, I have to say it is a really good script. I, and I'm just saying that like objectively knowing sometimes I make good stuff and sometimes I make not as good stuff. Um, and, and I find that what I loved about this, if I can toot my own horn for a minute, is just that I felt like it was a real, moment where like my skill set and the team I was working with and my taste all kind of met. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew it was a good script and I went in very confident with that. And I knew the rhythm, like there's a strong rhythm to the way that I write, I find. Mm -hmm. And um, the actors got that. And at first, but we found it on set, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like yeah. the first two takes, it was like, oof, okay, what's going on? How do we yeah. get into this, you know? <laughs> and when we did find our way into it, especially, and I think I'm specifically speaking about like the dating app scene, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that one in particular uh, between the two of them. It's uh, once they really got it and, you know, it was about picking up cues mm -hmm. and hitting those and not dragging. There could be not too much dragging until it got gentle toward the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that pacing was very important, but once we got it on, as scripted, then absolutely let them play. Like um, uh, the 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 one line that Dara says that is absolutely improvised. There is hates to walk, like that. That's her. So, I, yeah, I love that line. <laughs> I know it's so yeah. good. It's so yeah, good. I wish I could claim it as my own. But things <laughs> are so great with like that whole scene is just you know like that's it's clearly that that's two friends. Like I related to that scene so much. I have Me friends. Too. I know friends like that, like that whole night, you knew what that night was, you know, even if you haven't had that experience of, of getting dumped or getting catfished or whatever, like you, you have that night where you go out and you need comfort and things get a little crazy, but not too crazy. And like, you just, you're, you know, you're with people that you are so comfortable with. Totally. And mm -hmm. that you can be that playful with, you yeah. know, like these girls are, like they're homies right and mm -hmm. and you can I, I agree you can really feel that between them mm -hmm. yeah yeah um there was so much as you're watching it you know there's kind of like there's little acts that happen throughout um and so much of it i felt like in the short was told in the editing like so much happens and some is scripted some is not scripted. like there's whole sections where there's very little dialogue but so much is happening and so mm. can you talk a little bit about what the editing process was like? Was it always kind of in your head in that way that there would be these moments of heavier dialogue and then kind of stitched together with more monologue or um, m m no dialogue pieces? Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's so funny because I don't think I actually think of it as having much no dialogue, but when I look back at it, you're like, right, all oh, right, there, there, there mm. is. And that makes me happy because um, as a director, like I, I'm a writer first, so uh, director after that. And so my confidence isn't necessarily in the visual storytelling. It's in the writing and, and shooting that. So um, that's, it's, it's just good to hear that, that you did still see a lot within the storytelling just visually, mm -hmm. um, dynamically between the characters or individually within the characters. But um, so I don't know that I intentionally did that, no. And, I, and what's interesting, we had a fantastic, again, fantastic editor, Lindsay Alikas, who uh, we actually gave a producer, a, uh, associate producer credit because she was so in it, you know, mm -hmm. and had such great ideas. And, you know, her, when she got the footage, she was like, I was excited because I already knew it was so good, you know, before mm -hmm. she even put it together. And so I think it was a pleasure for her and that joy came through, but she also had fantastic ideas. Like the beginning was actually totally different uh, opening. It was, uh, it was her having a conversation with her mom on the phone uh, about mm -hmm. her upset, about her sadness. And it was just mm -hmm. like, this is not necessary. We can just show that yeah. at the opening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and that, 
that's exactly what I'm like. That works perfectly where you're just, the audience is just sort of thrown into the story, but it's not jarring in any way from moment one, you know exactly what happened, you know exactly what, what moment you're in. And like, it's just such a, such a comfortable drop into this whole world. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and I think also, you know, cause beginnings in anything can be so hard, not just, mm -hmm. I mean, shorts certainly cause they're so short, but even feature films, it's like, how do you make this a, a, an arresting uh, beginning while you're also setting everything up? Like it's so challenging. Mm -hmm. So it was more clunky and long in the beginning and, and kudos to my editor for having the bright idea that it's just like, you don't even need it. And um, I have to remember that for all my future scripts, you know? Yeah, yeah, it worked great. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about, I loved um, when they're, when she's texting back and forth um, with Brian, uh, mm -hmm. I loved how you set that up, that you're seeing, you know, a, a male actor and you're hearing the woman's best friend. Um, was that always your intention to have it be that? Like it gives it such a, a sweetness, I think, mm. hearing her voice and seeing his face. <laughs> you already have that familiarity between the two female characters. And so yeah. it that whole section just comes on, off as like so sweet and, and there's no mm. malice in it whatsoever. Oh, that's so interesting that you don't see any malice in it. That's great. Cause that's a real, um, uh, kind of like a heightened moment in a way where it could pull you out and stuff. So it's mm -hmm. nice to hear that it kind of, you know, uh, brings you in and keeps you within that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so actually that was really a, an interesting development with that one, because with that section, because I was like, okay, so if this is like her, cause she dreams up her dream guy. So it's yeah. like, so who's this dream guy? And I was originally, I was like, okay, well maybe we do like Pinterest, Instagram perfection. You know, he's mm -hmm. in like a great well-lit white, space, not unlike your own over there, Anna. Um, but you know, if, if it was sort of just to be heightened that way and sort of held mm -hmm. outside of time, like I did want to feel like it was a bit of suspension of the moment. Mm -hmm. um, that sense when you're falling in love with someone, you know, where it feels like um, it's unto itself, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I did want to frame it that way, but I, I didn't have that. What I wanted was him. And then I was talking about like the fact that what's you know, the best friend knows her so well, so it has to feel like her best friend is talking to her, but it's a guy. Mm -hmm. And it was through sort of jamming with my DP that we joint came up with that idea, uh, sort of out of the blue. I think he misunderstood me and suggested this. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is brilliant. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, in the, in the development of it. That's where it came from. That's great. Yeah. It's such a, I, I loved the, you know, that you chose that, that way to tell the story. It, it fits so perfectly. Thanks. So I really love it too. I like yeah. want to keep exploring that as a motif, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Like it's not, like I said, it's not jarring at all. Yeah. Because also like we all get so sick of text on screen, right? Like this mm -hmm. could have just been, whoop, you know, that we've seen yeah. now for so long and what do we do with it as storytellers, right? Like, so this felt like such a cool sort of weird way to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I'm afraid everyone's going to steal it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you started that trend. Yeah. I did. I'll trademark it. <laughs> Um, and can you talk a little bit about the score? Um, it's so lovely and like really, um, there's such a nice tranquil feeling um, when the, the main girl and Brian are sort of texting back and forth. And then there's such tension when she's sitting at the bar waiting for him, even though the, you know, as an audience member, you know what's gonna happen. You know that Brian is not gonna show up, but right. the score just evokes like such, like what is gonna happen, you know? Can you talk right. a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, again, just like stellar team mates on this, you know? Um, Alaska Alaska B is a uh, relatively new to, to composing, but she, um, and she's actually in this like unusual sort of like Asian First Nations inspired metal band. And that's when I first saw her, she plays the drums. Um, and uh, it was my editor who suggested her having worked with her on another film and you know, we sort of stole uh, thematically from something else she had done where at the beginning it feels very hands off. Like it's not saying a lot, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the score is not telling you anything in terms of how to feel. It's just a little sort of like unusual. And mm -hmm. then with the the softness with Brian, that was actually my, my um, temp music was Ethiopian uh, like uh, jazz, which mm -hmm. is has very bright and bubbly and um, lovely. And so mm -hmm. she sort of 
played with that and her brother's like a master pianist. So that was helpful yeah, and helpful. Um, <laughs> very helpful. And then for the final one, yeah, I just really spoke to her about how I wanted it to really crescendo and and she took it and layered it and made it so much more extreme. And I love it. it it's like mm -hmm. such a kind of unexpected cue for what's otherwise kind of mundane, right? But mm -hmm. it's it means so much to these characters. Like it, she's heartbroken, like it means yeah. a lot you know, that yeah. this, that she stood up again. And it means a lot that it's somebody she trusts who's mm -hmm. behind, it, you know? And mm -hmm. so it is a big, it is a big deal, even if she's just sitting on the couch eating chips while the other friend is having a drink, kind of feeling like an idiot, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and there were such, there's such little, great little moments throughout the film. Like I was sort of rewatching it in preparation for this Q and A and I was able to pause it and, notice on the friend's screen when she's like going to make the Brian mm -hmm. persona, I paused it and to mm -hmm. see her sort of um, uh, Google history. history. Yeah, like undigested food in stool. And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> great. Uh, you know, like everyone has that on their phone where they're like, oh, they, yeah, that last thing that I Googled totally. that maybe is not for anyone's eyes, but my own. Um, can you totally. talk about, was that, did that, ha something that happened organically or you were always like, no, I'm writing in <laughs> what is already on her phone? Yeah, so actually in the editing process, like there's, there was, um, cause there's a joke when they're doing the dating profile, the two girls and she's like, likes to eat long foods. And that's because I had a joke earlier on where she talks about like the, the boyfriend's poo, like they used to travel together and she like saw what his poo looks like. <laughs> Sorry. It's one of those things where it's like, it's gross. So we ended up cutting yeah. it out. Yeah. But so she, it, that's where that joke came from within the two of them, okay. like chatting. And then that's why earlier, it's supposed to just start a little bit earlier that moment where we're seeing her type that in and sort of scroll about undigested food in stool. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so happened that that was like a leftover uh, that is, is a lovely detail that nobody yeah. except for you, thank you so much, <laughs> would uh, pause to take a look at that detail. But yeah. it's sort of just like stuff that was was there and a part of it that fell away, but still adds detail. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I I was like, oh, this is yeah. So <laughs> everyone has that. Such a great, great yeah, thing. totally. Um, can you talk about? What was your your favorite part of making the film? And then maybe conversely, what was your least favorite part of making the film? Or maybe mm. you don't have the least favorite parts. <laughs> true, true. I mean, this was like a real joy to make. I'm not gonna lie. It's like a mm -hmm. it's a it's a highlight for me. It was a real joy. Um I think what was amazing was like we just uh put it together so quickly. And how did I just it's one of those things where I'm like, how did we do that you know it was just before the pandemic and anyway um I think my favorite part was you know it I, not surprisingly it was like it was the scene where yeah I think where the two of them are talking together uh in dating you know oh. that that because you could kind of feel what it was going to be like you know it was like it felt a little risky though because we hadn't tried the the syncing with the voice and stuff but mm -hmm. i could tell that it was working and i think it's just honestly it was working with these actors like dara is such an unusual the 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 catfisher is such an unusual performer um and she's usually quite restrained re restrained and in this she like just did some really surprising things mm -hmm. that i hadn't expected to see from her and I think also, alternatively, Michaela's ability to be vulnerable uh, was also so so beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. So I think those were my favorite parts. And like, you know, just when it's working, when it's working and you're like, I, I know it's working, you know? And yeah. I felt that a lot on this film. And that was so special and magical. And um, I mean, I don't know, you know, the hardest part was just that we did all of the post in the pandemic and I could only meet with my editor once, you know? Uh, like okay. that's the stuff that wasn't super fun and having wishing we had a bit more money so that we weren't so like ooh, tight about it. But I mean, everybody says that about filmmaking. So yeah, I shouldn't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's great to let you know that you say that how many moments that during making the film that it, like it just felt right because I feel like that really comes across in the film. Like you, the audience feels that everything just kind of feels like it yeah came together and it sounds like that is what happened
It is, it is, which is nice, which isn't always the case, right? Like sometimes yeah. things work as like it's a horror story behind the scenes or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, it's nice that that communicates because yes, that is the truth. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, and then to kind of wrap things up, um, can you talk about what you're working on next? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually developing Sucker um, into long format. And um, interestingly, like I'm sort of doing a two, pronged approach like I I'm leading first with um, a, a series a television series uh, uh, based on this with a, a pair of producers from the states who can't yet name but really interesting people to be working with and who really responded to the material um, and and in the meantime I'm also sort of drafting the feature version of this because you never know right yeah and either way I want this to have a, a life in a future because I can really feel its life force and I mm -hmm. think that it's it's still very relevant and I'm I'm interested in women and women's friendships and you know the the dark and the light parts of it yeah. um and uh and then yeah I I actually shot uh I was a gun for hire director on a feature a uh, thriller that's coming out it's called The Boathouse so that'll be coming out this probably fall and um, next month, I'm going out to be an actor on something in uh, on a, a Cree reserve in Alberta. Um, that's like a comedy mockumentary. So um, I'm stoked. Yeah, you've got a lot going on. That sounds great. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see you know what the ev evolution of Sucker is. Um, I can't wait to to see what it ends up being. Um, did you, if people want to follow along with your work or follow along uh, the film's journey, uh, mm -hmm. do you, can you plug your social media presence at all? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm hannahcheesman.com and you can find contact info there, uh, but also Instagram, I'm Hannah Shazam. And um, on Twitter, I'm just Hannah Cheeseman. And also worth following my producer, um, uh, Aiken Heart Films. So that's Coral Aiken, A-I-K-E-N. Um, because she's working on the on the uh, feature version with me as well. Great, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, participating in this Q and A and making a great film and allowing us to to show it at the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival. Thanks, honestly, my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate you screening it. <laughs>